The following content contains spoilers, so please be advised. You can leave now. Or stay, because I will spoil the shit out of this. I'm telling you, I will spoil it. Is it just dumb luck, or does Tongue actually have powers? Personally, I think he has powers. If this was animated, people would be saying, Oh my god, I wish I had powers. This reminds me of a, a Japanese uh, manga or a Japanese anime called uh, Death Note. Uh, where like Yagami just watches TV and uh, sort of kills people based on uh, knowing their name and how they look. He kills off the bad guys. And that's the beauty of it. And then there's this detective... L who knows light does it but can't prove it and the same thing happens here there's a detective who knows this guy does it but can't prove it it's just beautifully constructed oh man everybody should watch this man gave me good vibes i got goosebumps watching this it was incredible a killer paradox is a very interesting series about eight episodes long it's based on a web show or web series or webtoon of the same type of name. It's Korean and it's a breath of fresh air. It's got suspense, it's a thriller, it's a drama, it's got a bunch of killings in it. So I think this should be an eye watch for anyone who's interested in watching Korean shows or even watching anything that has to do with uh, crime and suspense. So the whole premise of this is that this uh, young man, Lee Tang, who recently got discharged from the military, his, his life is on a downward slope. And whatnot works in a convenience store and one day he accidentally accidentally kills a you know a rude customer per se and uh, after that uh, it's later discovered that uh, this rude customer happens to be a serial killer and by unbeknownst to him it always seems like um there's no evidence that ties him to the murder the police even conclude that uh, the serial murder or the serial killer was killed by one of his victims and he somehow survived. And long story short, uh, this goes on for the entirety of the show where he kills people. Accidentally killing people sometimes. Uh, of course, at, at first glance, it starts off as him killing accident. First, he kills this blind, half-blind lady because she was blackmailing him, wanting her to, him to give her millions every month for... For, because he had the hammer that he used to kill his first victim. So he ends up killing her. And unbeknownst to him, this lady killed his her parents and buried them in her backyard. And uh, it, it starts a chain reaction of some sort. Where he, every time he gets a tingling sensation, his murder sense. It's like spidey sense, but he senses uh, people with uh, murderous intent or murderous uh, crimes in a way. So he just kills them. And always happens that these people, after they discover they're dead, they're, they're, they're hunted or looked for for killing various people, raping girls, just doing heinous, uh, uh, atrocious crimes. And it becomes more of a superpower. Now there's, in comes this nerdy guy, Ben, uh, who is uh, only for heroes sort of campaign where he sort of starts a campaign where he's the sidekick and he's trying to help uh, you know, get rid of the injustice in the world. It all falls or stems from his childhood where his parents were killed in his sleep when he was young and he sort of becomes obsessed with law enforcement, he even tries to become a oh, police officer, but because of his physicality, he fails that assessment. So he becomes this uh, Alfred for Tang as, uh, as Tang becomes Batman, really. And uh, he's the psychic and Tang is the lead protagonist in a way. He He's the Batman, he's the vigilante, he's taking justice where police officers cannot go. And his superpower, in a way, you could say this thing has superpowers. If they turn it into an anime, people would say this guy's got superpowers. Because somehow, if he makes contact with anyone, or passes anyone who has done anything, any murders and anything, he sort of gets the hairs on his back rise up, and he knows this guy is a murderer, and he kills him, and unbeknownst to him or to the rest of the world, as soon as he does that, the police find evidence that this guy is the guy we've been looking for, this guy has got people in his basement, this guy did this, this guy did this, which is an incredible uh, thing on my opinion, so it's eight episodes long, each episode ranging about an hour or so, or an hour, fifth, yeah, ranging about an hour, sometimes 50 some minutes, so... It's really worth the watch. So if you've got eight hours to spare, you should watch this. I mean, it's worth the time. It's worth the minutes. 
it's really compelling it's really well constructed it's really amazing netflix did a great job incorporating this into reality i was at the edge of my seat most of the time i was like oh my god he's gonna get caught he's gonna get caught he's never gonna get caught oh my god how is this and, and then there's a whole other spectrum where you look at um ben the, the the nerdy guy with the glasses he's a bit chubby he's the you know the the, the security guy the, the the tech guy basically to tongue he he started this project earlier and one of his um people that he used back in the day to kill people comes back and is sort of psychotic in a way he just he just kills randomly like he just kills people out of the randomness of it being you know sometimes he kills around people and whatnot but tang is perfect tang lee kills people who've done crimes he does he doesn't have and the beauty of it, he has no motive, he has no emotional attachment to why he's killing you. Sometimes they don't even know why he killed you. He just knows you've done something wrong, so he kills you. And then he finds it on the news like everybody else. Which is incredible. When he first started doing this killing thing, he kidnapped this uh, professor fella who he, he suspected had the tingling sensation, the murderous intent. That this guy is a murderer. So he kidnaps him and then... Uh, his psychic comes up with his laptop, does his thing, and discovers, oh my god, this guy's raping and, and killing kids. And then he murders him. And from there, it's just um, yin yang, and they work together like Bonnie and Clyde. And then there's this detective who's after him with, like, like a cat and mouse race. He's after this guy. He knows this guy's doing this, but for some weird, beautiful reason, the heavens have blessed this guy. There's no evidence. It's either... Uh, rains when he does a murder or after he does a murder so the uh, the dna gets washed away or a fire starts like tongue is not really starting anything he does nothing he does nothing to change everything it just happens on its own his first murder or dog stole a hammer that he knew that had his prince and the lady tried to blackmail with him with the hammer he took the same hammer and killed her and that same lady's dog licked off tongue's dna in the whole apartment and they couldn't find DNA on this guy. It's, just, it's almost as if this tongue fella has a sixth and a seventh sense. Like he's the most luckiest person ever. Like he's he's got the sixth and the sense people who do bad things. And the heavens themselves always find a way to get rid of evidence for it. It's not like he takes uh, chloroform or, or, or Dettol or Handy Andy, whatever cleaning supply you think you're using and cleans the surface and cleans the crime scene. No, he doesn't do that. He just yanks a knife from a dude, beats a dude with a hammer, yanks a dude in the head with a brick, and something happens. It rains. It get there's fire. Something just happens. It's beautiful. I loved every waking moment of this show. And I... And the beauty of it... In the end, he still does another killing. And the detective that was after him ends up, you know, saying... There's nothing on this guy. That's the beauty of it. Even if they, they follow him close in hand... Whenever he commits a murder, there's nothing on him. Like, no evidence. So, in the end, he, re he sort of escapes towards the end and he comes back home and he does another final killing. And it's beautiful. And when you see the detective look at this TV and he's like, oh my god, tongue's out of the game. And he's like, my man. He doesn't say my man, but I think in his mind, he's like, my man's doing the game. Cleaning the rubbish out of these streets. And, of course, you may watch, you may ask yourself, does this have some sort of effect on him? Of course it does. He he starts off having horrible nightmares because of the people he killed, because of the guilt he wants to turn himself in. There's even this scene where he gathers all the evidence. Like, somehow he had the hammer, the brick, everything that would have incriminated him and take him to jail, basically. He puts it in his bag. He takes a couple of money because he wanted to pay off that lady that 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 had it. That saw him kill a person. So he ends up not paying her because he kills her. And then they find bodies on her yard. But long story short. So he takes the money. Bad mind before he 
wanted to pay, he took borrowed money from various people and whatnot. So he started wanting to pay people back. And a couple of scumbags see him without that money when he was trying to make a deposit at a bank, at an ATM bank. And anyway, he walks out of the, the bank building and these two bozos with a motorcycle snatch his backpack. And they take the money and throw away the evidence that would have sent him to jail into the water, into the river. So he's like, he's looking at the sky. He's like, Luigi! Oh my God, man. He's like, okay, okay, okay. He's not as static as I am, but he was like, damn, God. Are you really doing this for me? <laughs> it's a beautiful tale, man. It's a beautiful tale. Um, a paradox killer or a killer paradox. Not a paradox killer. A killer paradox. Now that was entertaining. Please let us hang out yet another time. Remember to like and subscribe. Adios, folks. Adios.